This week we talk about the NALCS Players Association and their group of representatives. Then we move on to the start of the summer split around the world and the crazy new team comps due to the shift in the meta. And finally we touch on a milestone event, the first ever default win issued in League of Legends Pro history. I'm Sushix from the League Digest, let's talk. Although announced mid last year, the member organization structure for the NALCS Plays Association was established earlier this month, with a PA summit being held on June the 6th. The goal of the Plays Association is to allow for the voices of the pros to be heard. This accounting for any uncertainty surrounding the stability of their careers, specifically in the long term for current and future players of involved organizations. During this time, a small group of representatives to speak for the majority were elected. This inaugural group of executive officers spanned many teams but ultimately landed on Da Sean as their president. Other notable inclusions in positions includes Biofrost as secretary and treasurer, and Doublelift, Bjergsen, and Mithi as vice presidents. The protection of competitive careers is extremely important, especially in today's day and age. Hopefully with the assistance and support of the Players Association, pro players can rest assured that their concerns will be heard. As stated in a LOL Esports article this time last year, our end goal is to create a strong and stable system that's profitable for pro players and provides entertainment for fans in the long term. With the new coming of the player association, this goal will be more likely to become a reality sooner rather than later. What are your thoughts on the players association and bringing attention to the way Riot treats their players? Let us know in the comments down below. Moving on, as the 2018 summer split kicked off around the globe, everyone was left wondering how the new meta would resonate in pro play. AD carries have been recognized as the weaker pick in exchange for mages or bruises in their place. Some of these picks include Yasuo, Vladimir, Brand, Dr. Mundo, Swain, and even Heimerdinger. The real question being, what exactly is going on in the current meta? Some pro players allude to changes to Essence Reaver and Infinity Edge being the source of the problem, but others think this shakeup was long overdue. Truth be told, nobody really knows what's optimal at the moment, seeing as AD carries, bruises, and mages have all seen success and failure in the bot lane. Some teams have already managed to adapt to the meta, bringing completely new picks to the bot lane or switching player roles entirely. As the weeks go on, more will definitely be revealed about the state of the meta. But until then, what do you guys think? Let us know in the comments down below. With this new meta, the second competitive split of 2018 started across all regions worldwide. We won't waste your time going through every region, but there were some surprising results to come out of the LCS. In the NALCS, TSM is at a solid 2-0 when they arguably weren't anticipated as a top team because of their spring split performance. While 100 Thieves, who made it to the spring split finals, went 0 and 2 when they were expected to dominate. This also included an embarrassing loss to one of the bottom of the pack teams, Golden Guardians. Clutch Gaming also lost to Echo Fox in the first ever default win, which we'll discuss later on in the video. Moving over to the EU, Misfits are the dark horse of the EU LCS. Nobody expected them to dominate after their performance last season. In spite of this, they defeated both Unicorns of Love and Fnatic, ending their first week 2-0. H2K seemed to be in a slump in the first week, which is surprising considering their matches were against the lower bracket Rockat and Giants. Lastly, G2 is back on top, and Splice seem to have fallen from their spring split third place performance, ending the first week with two losses. Our last story of the week is a spicy one, and a milestone event. During the game between Echo Fox and Clutch Gaming on June 17th, a world first took place. The first professional default win had been issued. A major technical issue was suffered at 32 minutes and 26 seconds into the game. The server crashed as a result, kicking out all 10 players from the game. This later was found to be caused by Talia, leading her to be disabled from competitive play. At the point of the crash, Fox was up 7 turrets to 0, held a 4 dragon lead and a destroyed inhibitor over clutch. Keeping these in mind, Riot officials ruled that CG did not have a reasonable chance to come back in this game. Section 14.1 was addressed at this point, ruling that Echo Fox automatically win due to their significant advantage. Although by the discretion of Riot officials, the game didn't actually meet any of the listed criteria, although coming very close. The goal differentiation was about 25% as opposed to the listed 33%, 
The remaining turrets were at 7 rather than more than, and there was only one destroyed inhibitor instead of two. Although reasonable, the LCS is known for its unpredictable nature and for the underdogs of a game to make their unexpected comeback. There was naturally some backlash, which was understandable. They couldn't award them both wins or losses due to the effect it would have on the latter, and there was still a possibility that CG could have won the game. While a rematch would have been ideal to some fans, this sort of incident is unprecedented and could have awarded a win to a team that would have lost their first initial match. Chris Geely, the commissioner of the NALCS, tweeted that the fact of this issue would be addressed. We will be issuing more information in the next few days about today's awarded game victory, as well as following up with all of the NALCS teams on the usage of this rule. So what do you guys think? Do you think the ruling was fair for both teams? Let us know in the comments down below. Unfortunately, that's all we have time for in this week's episode of the League Digest. Thank you guys so much for watching, we've been putting a lot of effort into our content lately and we'll be continuing to ramp up how much we upload and the quality of those uploads as the weeks go by. As always, if you guys like what we do, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and keep updated with every new upload that we bring. And on that, don't forget to follow our social media on Twitter, Facebook and Instagram to see everything that we can do behind the scenes, come chat to us on our social networks and also we'll be posting new videos and stuff there as well. Lastly, I want to mention that we have a Patreon that is super important to the production of this show. Um, we're currently at about like $30, and if we can get to $50, we'll be starting our podcast, which we have major plans for. It's going to be a lot of fun. We're going to have so many different guests, and um, we have really big plans for it that we don't think has been done in League of Legends podcasting before. Well, that wraps up everything. I'm Sushiks with the League Digest, and I'll talk to you guys later.